Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. We are in the paper entitled Advanced Spanish Grammar. I am Gaurav Kumar and I teach Spanish in the center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. The title of this module is The Spanish Direct and Indirect Speech. You may recall reading about it in the Intermediate Grammar paper. In this module, we shall revise it in greater details. Both in Spanish and English, there exist two ways of expressing what the other person has said. The direct speech or in Spanish called as estilo directo and the indirect speech in Spanish called as estilo indirecto. The direct speech is relatively easier considering that the exact words of the speaker are quoted using inverted commas. Let us see some examples. El presidente dijo la India es un gran país. I repeat, el presidente dijo la India es un gran país. The English equivalent is the president said India is a great country. Another example. Miguel pregunta, ¿Dónde está el parque de atracciones? I repeat. Miguel pregunta, ¿Dónde está el parque de atracciones? In English, Miguel asks, Where is the amusement park? Let us take another example. Ana explicó, no tengo coche. I repeat, Ana explicó, no tengo coche. In English, Ana explained, I don't have a car. Whereas the indirect speech involves some complexity as it is expressed without quotes and accordingly there are changes in tense, subject pronouns and possessives may also be needed to change as well. Let us see some examples. El Presidente dijo que la India era un gran país. I repeat, el presidente dijo que la India era un gran país. In English, the president said that India was a great country. Next example is, Miguel pregunta que, ¿Dónde está el parque de atracciones? I repeat, Miguel pregunta que, ¿Dónde está el parque de atracciones? In English, Miguel asks, Where is the amusement park? Another example is, Ana explicó que no tenía coche. I repeat, Ana explicó que no tenía coche. In English, Ana explained, that she didn't have a car. As you can see, the difference between the estilo directo and the estilo indirecto is that the exact words are replicated in quoted inverted commas in the case of the direct speech, whereas the estilo indirecto or the indirect speech or also at times called the reported speech is introduced with the conjunction K without any inverted commas. 
you may have noticed that when the verb in the main clause is in the present tense then there is no change in tense of dependent clause like in the example Miguel pregunta que donde esta el parque de atracciones both the halves the first half of Miguel pregunta and the dependent part donde esta el parque de atracciones are in the present tense but in the other sentences where the main verb is in the past dijo explicó there is a change of tense for the dependent clause as well el presidente dijo que la india era un gran país i repeat el presidente dijo que la india era un gran país here you can see that instead of saying es un gran país it has changed to era un gran país in the indirect speech same thing happens in the next example ana explicó que no tenía coche i repeat ana explicó que no tenía coche here the earlier tiene of the direct speech has been changed to tenía let us try to understand these changes in the verb tense with the help of other examples direct speech carlos dijo voy a madrid i repeat carlos dijo voy a madrid in indirect speech the present indicator changes to imperfect past or also what we call as the preterito imperfecto so the same sentence in the indirect speech is carlos dijo que él iba a madrid i repeat Carlos dijo que él iba a Madrid. Let us see the next change. In direct speech, the sentence is Carlos dijo fui a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo fui a Madrid. In indirect speech, the pretrit of the indicative in the sentence, which is fui, changes to the preterito plus quam perfecto in the indirect speech so the sentence becomes carlos dijo que él había ido a madrid i repeat carlos dijo que él había ido a madrid let us see the next change in the direct speech the sentence is Carlos dijo he ido a Madrid I repeat Carlos dijo he ido a Madrid in the indirect speech the present perfect indicator or the preterito perfecto changes to preterito plus quam perfecto so the indirect speech form is Carlos dijo que él había ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo que él había ido a Madrid. Let us see now the next change. In the direct speech, the sentence is, Carlos dijo iré a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo iré a Madrid. A Madrid. Here the future indicative ire will change to the conditional in the indirect speech form. So the sentence will be Carlos dijo que iría a Madrid. I repeat Carlos dijo que iría a Madrid. Let us take the next case. 
In the direct speech, the sentence is Carlos dijo, Abre ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo, Abre ido a Madrid. In the indirect speech, the future perfect indicative changes to conditional perfect. So the sentence becomes in the indirect speech as Carlos dijo que él habría ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo que él habría ido a Madrid. With the subjunctive, let us see how there is a change. The sentence in the direct speech is Carlos dijo no creo que ella vaya a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo, no creo que ella vaya a Madrid. It is to be noted that for the subjunctive to take place, the negative crane has the subject yo and the dependent clause que ella vaya a Madrid is has been the ella as the subject for the verb ir. With two different subjects and the negative crane in the main clause, it is possible to use vaya in the subjunctive in the dependent clause of this sentence. So I repeat once again, Carlos dijo, no creo que ella vaya a Madrid. In the indirect speech, the present perfect subjunctive changes to preterito imperfecto de subjunctivo. In the indirect speech, the present subjunctive changes to preterito imperfecto de subjunctivo or the imperfect subjunctive in the indirect speech. Let us see the sentence in the indirect speech now. Carlos dijo que él no creía que ella fuera a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo que él no creía que ella fuera a Madrid. Let us take the next example. In the direct speech, the sentence is, Carlos dijo, no creo que ella haya ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo, no creo que ella haya ido a Madrid. In the indirect speech, the preterito perfecto de subjuntivo changes to the preterito plusquam perfecto de subjuntivo. So the sentence is, Carlos dijo que él no creía que ella hubiera ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo que él no creía que ella hubiera ido a Madrid. Next example is that of in the direct speech. Carlos dijo, yo había ido a Madrid. I repeat, Carlos dijo, yo había ido a Madrid. In preterito plusquam perfecto, there is no change in the indirect speech form. And it remains as preterito plusquam perfecto. But yes, there is change of subject pronoun from yo to el. So the final sentence in the indirect speech is, Carlos dijo que el había ido a Madrid. Mind it, both the sentence sound the same except that the subject pronouns are different. In the first case of the direct speech, it is yo which changes into l in the indirect speech. Similarly, it should be kept in mind that the preterito imperfecto let us see some examples with changes in the verbs. In the indirect speech, the example is 
Manuela añadió que no le gustaba la película de esa noche. I repeat, Manuela añadió que no le gustaba la película de esa noche. The English equivalent is Manuela added that she didn't like that night's film. Let us take the next example. Ella explicó que los niños no habían estado en casa ese día. I repeat, ella explicó que los niños no habían estado en casa ese día. The English version is, she explained that her kids had not been at home that day. Let us now see how certain modifications or interpretations of the direct speech happens when somebody expects something to be done. Suppose my mother wants that I should lose weight, then she can advise me in the direct speech as Creo que deberías adelgazarte. I repeat, Creo que deberías adelgazarte. In English, I think you should lose weight. In the indirect speech format, I can simply narrate this to anybody as Mi madre me dijo que ella creía que yo debería adelgazarme. I repeat, Mi madre me dijo que ella creía que yo debería adelgazarme. Or, I can modify this sentence like this. Mi madre me aconsejó que me adelgazara. I repeat, Mi madre me aconsejó que me adelgazara. This is the interpretation of what I think about my mom's intention. Most interpretations of such kind must be followed by the subjunctive structures. Like we have seen in this sentence, it is adelgazara. Me adelgazara is the subjunctive form. Let us see other examples. In the direct speech, el profesor me dijo, no entres en mi despacho sin mi permiso. I repeat, el profesor me dijo, no entres en mi despacho sin mi permiso. The English equivalent is, the professor said, don't enter into my office without my permission. Now let us try to change this or rather interpret it into the indirect speech form. El profesor me ordenó que no entrara en su despacho sin su permiso. I repeat. El profesor me ordenó que no entrara en su despacho sin su permiso. In English, the professor ordered me not to enter his office without his permission. Let us take another example. The direct speech sentence is Mi hermano me dijo, no toques al perro. I repeat, mi hermano me dijo, no toques al perro. The English equivalent for the sentence is, my brother told me, 
don't touch the dog now let us see how this sentence changes into the indirect speech mi hermano me advirtió que no tocara al perro i repeat mi hermano me advirtió que no tocara al perro in english my brother warned me from touching the dog or my brother warned me not to touch the dog let us see the next example now mi amiga marta me dijo ven a mi fiesta esta noche i repeat mi amiga marta me dijo ven a mi fiesta esta noche this is the direct speech now let us try to convert this into the indirect speech mi amiga marta me invitó a que fuera a su fiesta esa noche i repeat mi amiga marta me invitó a que fuera a su fiesta esa noche let us see another example with the direct speech ella le dijo a su marido no olvides limpiar el jardín mañana i repeat ella le dijo a su marido no olvides limpiar el jardín mañana in the indirect speech this sentence becomes ella le recordó a su marido que limpiara el jardín el día siguiente i repeat ella le recordó a su marido que limpiara el jardín el día siguiente let us also see how these sentences are in english so the direct speech sentence ella le dijo a su marido no olvides limpiar el jardín mañana is translated as she told her husband don't forget to clean the garden tomorrow and now when it is in change to indirect speech ella le recordó a su marido que limpiara el jardín el día siguiente the english version is she reminded her husband to clean the garden the next day another example is dándome ánimos carlos me dijo estudia medicina i repeat dándome ánimo carlos me dijo estudia medicina carlos said to me encouragingly study medicine let us see how this direct speech sentence is converted into the indirect speech carlos me animó a estudiar medicina is one way of saying the sentence the other possibility is carlos me animó a que estudiara medicina i repeat the sentences the first possibility is carlos me animó a estudiar medicina and the other one is carlos me animó a que estudiara medicina both can be translated into english as carlos encouraged me to study medicine in the two forms of the way to express the same like carlos me animó a estudiar medicina and carlos me animó a que estudiara medicina there is the use of the subjunctive in the second half in this case you should remember that you are supposed to use either the sentence without the k or in case you are using it with k then don't forget to put the subjunctive the speaker's intentions can be understood by certain elements 
in a sentence like el dijo si yo fuera tú no compraría en esa tienda i repeat el dijo si yo fuera tú no compraría en esa tienda in english he said if i were you i wouldn't buy in that shop so here the speaker is trying to advise not to go to that shop let us see indirect speech formation in this case el pe aconsejó or we can say sugirió recomendó propuso que no comprara en esa tienda either of these verbs is good i am again repeating the sentence el me aconsejó sugirió recomendó propuso que no comprara en esa tienda so the english equivalent is he suggested recommended proposed that i not to buy in that shop next example is carlos le dijo a isabel por qué no dejas de fumar i repeat the sentence in the direct speech is carlos le dijo a isabel por qué no dejas de fumar english equivalent is carlos said to isabel why don't you give up smoking the indirect speech format is carlos le aconsejó sugirió propuso recomendó a isabel que dejara de fumar once again all these verbs are possible you can choose either of them i repeat the sentence carlos le aconsejó sugirió propuso recomendó a isabel que dejara de fumar in english carlos advised isabel to give up smoking in the sentences of the type shall i or shall we they can be reported using ofrecer or ofrecerse a when the situation indicates an offer let us see this in the form of a sentence los niños le dijeron a su padre te ayudamos con esto so the direct speech sentence i am repeating it again los niños le dijeron a su padre te ayudamos con esto the english version is the kids said to their father shall we help you with this the indirect speech format is the following los niños ofrecieron ayudarle al padre con eso i repeat los niños ofrecieron ayudarle al padre con eso or we can have the other verb ofrecerse also in this sentence los niños se ofrecieron a ayudarle a su padre con eso the english version will be the kids offered to help their father with that let's see the case of some exclamatory sentences let us see the case of some exclamatory sentences direct speech the sentence is el hombre dijo que mujer tan bonita i repeat el hombre dijo que mujer tan bonita the english equivalent is the man said what a pretty woman now let us see the indirect speech format el hombre exclamó or we can say 
El hombre dijo que la mujer era muy bonita. I repeat. You can say, el hombre exclamó, or el hombre dijo que la mujer era muy bonita. In English, the man exclaimed or said that the woman was very pretty. Let us see the next example. Mi profesor me dijo, enhorabuena, has aprobado el examen de inglés. I repeat, mi profesor me dijo, enhorabuena, has aprobado el examen de inglés. In English, my teacher said to me, congratulations, you have passed your English exam. Let us see this in the indirect speech format. Mi profesor me felicitó por aprobar el examen de inglés. I repeat, mi profesor me felicitó por aprobar el examen de inglés. This can also be said as, mi profesor me felicitó por haber aprobado el examen de inglés. I repeat, mi profesor me felicitó por haber aprobado el examen de inglés. Or we can say, mi profesor me dio la enhorabuena por aprobar el examen de inglés. Or we can say, mi profesor me dio la enhorabuena por haber aprobado el examen de inglés. All these sentences are translated as, my teacher congratulated me on my passing the English exam. To express denial or refusal, the direct speech example, él dice, yo no tengo nada que ver con ese robo. I repeat. Él dice, yo no tengo nada que ver con ese robo. In English, he says, I have nothing to do with that theft. The reported speech format is, él niega tener nada que ver con ese robo. I repeat, él niega tener nada que ver con ese robo. Or we can also say, el niega que tiene nada que ver con ese robo. He denies having anything to do with that theft. We have covered in great detail the various possibilities of the reported speech and hope the concepts are clear to you. Please be advised that the constructs are not easy to remember, therefore, a thorough revision and practice of more exercise is highly recommended. Thank you. Gracias.